Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this beautiful day that God has given us. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's leading worship today, we welcome you. We are so pleased that you are joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for this time of worship. We want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining us for the first time. We are just delighted that you have chosen Douglas Avenue, and we want to to encourage you to use the contact form. The link for that is pinned right in the comment section. This is a way that we'll be able to connect with you and come up alongside you in your life of faith. So please use that contact form and fill out the information there, particularly your email address, because then we'll be able to connect you with the e-newsletter that has all of the most up-to-date information about uh, opportunities for worship and small groups and service and all of the things in the community. So please use that contact form. And remember that also on the contact form is a place for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please do use that contact form today. When we join together in online worship, we always covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That means that we promise to participate at whatever it is that we're doing in online worship, we just wholeheartedly jump in and do it. When we're singing, go ahead, stand up and sing. When it's time to pray, pray. Listen intently. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions and really focus in on what we're doing. Maybe you can light a candle to help you focus, but we do promise together to really fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that in all the ways we are together, the ways we are in the comment section, the way we may be sitting with other people in our households worship, Worshiping, the way we are with the community and the wider world, that all of these things will be a blessing for everyone that participates and for just the wider world, wider world all the way around. As we continue in worship, we're going to have an opportunity to center ourselves with a time of special music. So let's do that now and welcome to worship. Hi, I'm Patty Ingram, a member of the church. And I'm Sue Landgreep, also a member of the church. Please receive this call to worship. We know that God is always with us. So we worship today to help us remember that we are with God. In this time of worship, may our hearts be glad. May our souls rejoice. May our bodies rest secure. God shows us the path of life. And in God's presence, there is fullness of joy. And we, we are, are so glad to be together in God's presence. Please join us in singing My Lighthouse.
before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms Fire before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms Fire before us You're the brightest You will lead us through the storms Fire before us and I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join me in the spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. Oh God, our protector, we thank you for this day, for the breath of life in our bodies, and to be able to gather in so many ways to worship you. We trust in you and depend on you for all we need. We know that all good things come from you, and we commit our future into your hands. Please continue to guide us today and every day. Be near us so that nothing can shake us. Help us to know your presence always. Show us the path that leads to life. Let your spirit fill us with joy, and let your service be our joy forever. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments, with one another, with me, and with those in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Connie Sims, and I am a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, and for the next eight weeks I'm also going to be chair of the garage sale so I hope to see you all and um, peace be with you I'm Kevin and I'm Karen I'm Tanya and, and peace, peace be, be with, with you. you hi I'm Cindy Hammer and I'm on the mission committee peace be with you Oh my goodness, it's time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children who are joining with us in online worship to come in really close to your devices, to your screens, so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So get ready everybody for small talk. Hi, I am Miss Laurie, and this is Laud the Lamb and his assistant, Cohen. Hi. And we've been cooking today. So, problem number one, Laud. I was supposed to be taking these somewhere today and we're missing a lot of them. Do you know anything about that? No. I don't think he's telling the truth on that one, but okay. Anyway. Cooking with Laud today. We're making, he wanted tater tots. We're gonna, we're gonna make tater tots, but half of the bag of tater tots is gone. Do you know anything about that, Laud? No. Hmm. Could it be? that the tater tots and the blueberry muffins were just too tempting? Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that we struggle with the most, I think, is temptation. 
Even when we're told to not eat something or to not do something, if it's something we really, really want to do, sometimes we make a mistake and fail. But even though we should work on, on not being so tempted, Laud, and not eating the tater tots and the muffins, God still loves us and forgives us. So, just remember that, everybody. It does happen, but it's okay. God loves you no matter what. Bye, guys. Hello, my name's Keith Schnepp. I'm a longtime member of Douglas Church, chairman of the Board of Trustees, and a member of the Zephyr Sunday School class. Today's reading from the Bible is Psalm 16. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another god multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I'm so excited to welcome Cindy Arnold as our guest preacher today for online worship at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church as we're continuing in our worship series, Stories to Live By. During the school year, Cindy is a fabulous math teacher at Lincoln High School, and so of course she is absolutely thrilled to be out on summer uh, break right now. Cindy is a part of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. She's active in our young adult Sunday school class and working in the community garden. She is in the process of being certified as a lay minister in the United Methodist Church. She preaches all around our area and will be in several of our United Methodist churches this summer. Cindy is a lifelong United Methodist growing up in the Nokomis United Methodist Church and then as a member of Grace United Methodist Church in Jacksonville and First United Methodist Church in Springfield and she's going to be transferring her membership here to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church this summer. Cindy loves to crochet, to travel, to read and write poetry and we are just so blessed to have Cindy bring this word to us today. Welcome Cindy. Good morning. My name is Cindy Arnold, and I've been attending Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church since last fall, like Meredith mentioned a moment ago. Thank you so much for the warm welcome that you have all given me over the last several months. I am very grateful to be here with you today as we continue our sermon series on verses to live by. I'm excited to share a bit of my own story with you and how God has used one particular verse the last few years to deepen my faith and strengthen my walk with him. We all heard Psalm 16 a moment ago, and I want to zero in our focus on that last verse, verse 11. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God has used this verse over and over again lately for me as he helps me follow that path of life that the psalmist references. Because you see, I am a planner. Maybe you can sympathize 
On the way to work, I tend to run down the plans for that day. And on the way home, I think about my plans for tomorrow, too. I teach Algebra 1, so I'm usually rethinking and revising my lesson plans for the next day. But I'm not just a planner when I'm teaching or in teacher mode. It's who I am when I'm outside the classroom, too. A few days ago, I made a plan for how I want to spend my summer break. And I wrote it out on this huge, big, pink post-it note and put it on my wall. The things on it seemed a little bit lame for what's supposed to be my vacation, full of things like get the ice maker fixed and take that cardboard to the recycle center. So I also added things like read, walk, take a nap. You can tell my plans are often very detailed. And that's the way I've always been. I was a kid making plans when my friends were more focused on video games and riding bikes. I knew when I was 12 that I wanted to be a teacher and I did everything I needed to do in order to make that happen. I was a diligent high school and then college student and then, ta-da, I took a job teaching math right out of college. So the plan had clearly worked, right? So you might imagine my disappointment several years later when I started to feel like I didn't know what the plan was anymore. Around 2017, I started to feel an odd conundrum. I felt very stuck in the chapter that I was living, but somehow I also felt very disconnected from it too, adrift. I was teaching AP Calculus and Honors Algebra 2, and I was serving as the math department chair, and I had been doing these things for years, and I saw no change in sight at all. I didn't feel grounded in this process though. I wanted change, I yearned for change, but I had no idea what that change could be. I was living the plan that I had pursued and held for so long, so what could be different? I couldn't imagine what might be next, but I also couldn't imagine what could be different either. And I couldn't imagine that this was my last chapter in the story. As an expert plan follower, I turned to God and asked point blank what the new plan was. Find a husband and start a family? Teach at the nearby college instead? Move to full-time ministry? Travel with the United Methodist mission work? Teach overseas? For a couple of years, I presented all of these ideas to God, asking if they were the next plan. And each time, God redirected our conversation back to Psalm 1611. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Now, at first, when I started hearing and seeing this verse all over the place, and I'm talking everywhere, it came up in my devotions, at church, in my conversations, it was even all over my social media. I thought, excellent, God is promising to show me that next step that I need to take. Finally, God was giving me that next plan. But the longer I walked with God in this verse, the further I got into my story and still had no idea where I was going. I went back to the verse again and again, and eventually I read it differently, heard something different. You show me the path of life, the psalmist says. Guess what it doesn't say? It doesn't say God will tell us where we're going, or who we're going with, or even what the journey will be like along the way. God does promise to show us the path, though, just that next step in front of us, one step at a time. After a few years of wondering what I was doing and where I was going, I took a leap of faith and started applying to new teaching jobs. And after a few applications and a few interviews, after a rejection and a redirection, eventually I was hired in May 2020 to teach math at Lincoln Community High School, where I am now. After 13 years of teaching and leading in my first school right out of college, I took a leap of faith and made the biggest change of my entire adult life and I still didn't know much of a plan. All I knew was that I needed to get to know people in my new school, I needed to plan my new curriculum, I needed to sell my current house, I needed to buy a new one, and I clung to Psalm 1611 like it was a life raft. You show me the path of life. You show me the path of life, Lord. I don't have to write the plan myself. I don't have to have it all figured out right now. I don't have to know where I'll be in five years, and I don't even have to know how today's decision will affect that plan five years from now either. I do not have to predict the things that I cannot predict. 
Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't plan or dream for the future or that God doesn't sometimes give us vision for where we're headed. He does. But what I have learned is that it's okay to just take the next step as it comes. For instance, last summer, I looked at dozens of houses with my realtor here in town, and I got totally caught up in worrying that I wouldn't buy the right house. What if I bought one and missed the warning signs? What if it ended up being a money pit and needed more repairs than we thought? What if it wasn't in the right neighborhood? What if I didn't meet the right people? What if I ended up being miserable there? But sitting with God and focusing on that verse taught me to ask different questions instead. Perhaps, what if God gives us a general direction to move in and we get to make some of our own choices along the way? What if I buy this house and God still introduces me to people from that neighborhood across town? What if God works it all out? What if God guides my path? What if the path of life that God offers us is less about getting the next step exactly right and more about how to best love and live with the people who are on the path right here with us, no matter what step we took to get here? What if we just keep walking that path of life with God, loving everyone we meet along the way, just like Jesus did, and we see where God guides us as we walk? In church, sometimes we call that approach to life one of surrender, living one day at a time, one step at a time, trusting that God will be our guide and our partner. Jesus talks about that too, but that's a sermon for another day. So in the last year, I did find a new house, and I did find where I fit in my new school. And I do feel like I am exactly where God wants me to be, including preaching here with you today, which was part of the plan that I did not predict at all a year ago. God was certainly faithful and showed me the path of life one step at a time. But I do have one more particular day from the last year that I want to share with you. A day when everything went sideways and I came home feeling completely dejected and disoriented. I wondered if I'd made all the wrong choices in the last year. What if all that stuff about God guiding me and God using my choices within his plan, what if it was all mumbo jumbo? And what if I had wrecked everything in this move and this bad day was just the first sign of it? But then that night, after months of not even thinking about Psalm 1611, God put it in front of me again. Thankfully, God has a good habit of bringing back the lessons we think we've learned and then promptly forgotten. So that night, I read the second part of the verse again, and I realized I had completely forgotten that part. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence is fullness of joy. Now all I could say was, all right, God. I see you. The promise doesn't say, after you've taken all the right steps, there is fullness of joy. It doesn't say, after you've found the right job, house, community, career combination, there is fullness of joy. No. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. The fullness of joy comes from walking that path of life with God. I often wonder if it's not really the path that matters, it's being in God's presence that does. The fullness of joy doesn't come from walking that path perfectly or taking all the right steps in just the right order. The fullness of joy comes from walking that path of life with God. We can be on that path with God and still face heartache and pain. In fact, that's bound to happen. And on the flip side of that, we can be on a different path altogether and find something that might look like fleeting happiness there too. But the fullness of joy that God promises, that's from walking the path with God. That's when it all comes together. The good, the bad, the excitement and the disappointments, the love and the grief and the joy and the sorrow. And in all of that mixed up together, within that and with God, we know the fullness of joy that God promises. So if you're walking today and don't know what lies ahead of you, that's okay. And even if you do have a long-term vision and if something changes along the way, that's okay too. You're in good company here. God will show you the path of life if you seek it out with him. 
and in the ups and the downs, when it feels like we're on the right path, and even when it doesn't. God offers us a fullness of joy with him that nothing else can provide. So let's rest in that promise and take the next step right in front of us on that path of life. Please join us in He Leadeth Me, a Blessed Thought. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and my home church is Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is now time that we go to God in prayer, so I invite you to um, close your eyes as we go to God in prayer on a prayer based on Psalm 16. Preserve us, O God, for we take refuge in your love. Preserve us, O God, as we live as grateful people. We are grateful for your love, for our church, our friends and family, and all of your creation. We are grateful for vaccines and for health. Cause us, O oh God, to delight in you. Give us the wisdom to minister to those who embrace other gods. Help us, God, to aid those who are sick or grieved. Call on us to do our part to share your love with others. We give you thanks for the ministries of this church. Please shower your love over the work of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Compass, the His Home Bike Ride, the preparations for the garage sale, and all of the work with the hungry and all of the work that is done from this church. O oh Lord, you are our portion and our cup overflows. You hold our destiny, and we thank you for this beautiful inheritance. Thank you, God, for the counsel of your spirit, for being with us as we travel through life, how your Holy Spirit never leaves us. We ask that you be with those that are struggling among us. Please surround the homeless, the hungry, the addicted, the lost, and all of those that are seeking and calling out for your unending love. Call on us to help those in need and to seek out those that don't even know your presence. We ask for help, O oh God, and we know that you are with us. Be with our church and our denomination. For all the work done at annual conference, we thank you. Please watch over all of our leaders, both church leaders and government leaders. May they lead with their eyes fixed on you. Thank you that you are always before us. We try so hard not to be shaken because we know you are with us. Therefore, our hearts are glad this morning, oh God, and we try to be the people where our whole being rejoices because we trust you. We know that you will not abandon us and you are with us each day and that gives us such comfort. Thank you that you make known the path to new life 
In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. I now invite you to sit in a moment of silence as we bring our own prayers to God. And if you will, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know that a generous life is a part of following the path of life that God places before us. And we are so grateful here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for all of the ways that you are generous with your finances, with your time, with your service. Thank you so much. We want to encourage you to continue to give generously to Douglas Avenue. You can do that using our online giving portal. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section and you can access it off our webpage as well. You can give by setting up automatic giving through your financial institution or with ours. If you need help with that, just contact us in the church office. And of course, you can send in your checks right to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. All of this giving is making a huge difference in the way we are able to be in ministry here at home and around the world. I want to encourage you to connect your faith into service and action this week. And there's lots of ways to do that with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. One is with our community vaccination clinic. It is time. It is this Thursday, June 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. We encourage you to sign up for vaccination using the links in our e-news and our webpage or just call the church office. Please encourage your friends, family, and neighbors to come to be vaccinated as well. Uh, they can use the same registration links or call the church office or just come on Thursday between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. And if you can assist in any way with this clinic or with our second shot clinic that will be on July 8th, please let us know using the link in the e-newsletter or by calling the church office. And please pray for this uh, wonderful outreach into our community. We also would really love for you to go ahead and register for Celebrating God's Creation Family Camp, our summer vacation Bible school for kids, family, and people of all ages. It runs for four days, Monday, June 21st through Thursday, June 24th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m each evening as an outdoor fun in-person experience with activities and music and games. Please use that registration link through our e-newsletter or just contact us in the church office to register for more information. And then please don't forget that we're receiving offerings to support the annual fundraising bike ride for his home orphanage in Haiti. The bike ride begins on Monday, June 21st. We hope that you will give generously to support our riders and the orphanage. You can do that through our online giving portal, see the special offerings drop down menu or send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church designated with his home orphanage. And then the mighty modified Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church garage sale is coming up it's in July, July 16th and 17th. Donations are being accepted this week on Tuesday morning, June 15th from nine to noon, Thursday evening, June 17th from six to 8 p.m. And then Saturday morning again, June 19th from 9 a.m. to noon. Please read the information about this very carefully in our e-newsletter on how to make donations and to volunteer. And if you have any questions, please contact Connie Sims or the church office. And again, I encourage you to use that contact form to make sure you put your email in there so that we can send you that e-newsletter and to remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. Thank you for your continued generosity. Please join us in singing, Be Thou My Vision. Thank you. 
thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been a joy and an honor and privilege to worship with you. I pray that this experience has been uplifting and meaningful, that you will join with us again for online worship or for in-person worship on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. We love you. We want to pray with you. We want to be a part of your life and journey of faith. So please use that contact form. Let us have your email address so that we can connect with you, uh, that we can send you the e-newsletter with all of the opportunities opportunities for worship and small groups and uh, service and all of those things with Douglas Avenue. And as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you, that Jesus Christ saves you, that the Holy Spirit lights your path each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>